This is lesson 8 in domain 10. The title of this lesson is A Young Nation is Born. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe our nation's capital. Like always, we do have some vocabulary before we get started. The first one is capital, a city that serves as the center of government for a state or a country. Permanent, lasting forever, not expected to change. President, the person in charge of a country, a company, or an organization. And united, combined into one. For the first few years after the Revolutionary War ended, the former British colonies could not seem to agree on anything. They had not yet come up with a name for themselves. Some said they should be called the Union of States. Others liked the sound of the American nation. Others simply wanted to call themselves by the names of the states in which they lived. Virginians, if they lived in Virginia, New Yorkers, if they lived in New York, and so on. There was no plan for how they would be governed or ruled, so lots of different people were making up lots of different rules. States were taxing one another unfairly, just like the British had done before the war. What a big mess. George Washington was enjoying life at Mount Vernon with his wife, their children, and their grandchildren. At 57, he felt he had served his country well as commander-in-chief, and he was not looking for any more jobs away from his farm. But four years after returning home from the Revolution, Washington was called to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for another big meeting. He joined many of the same men with whom he had worked in the Continental Congress at the beginning of the war. These men are called our four, oh, these men are called our founding fathers, or simply founders, because they helped found or start our new country. Benjamin Franklin, now 81 years old, was the oldest representative there. George Washington was elected president of the convention or meeting. It was called the Constitutional Convention because the men were writing a constitution, a plan for how the new nation could live together peacefully. Stop arguing, George Washington told the men. We have an important job to do. It was very hard work. They met for four long, hot months from May to September. The men continued to argue. Some even walked out. But most of them stayed until they came up with a good plan, or constitution. Their hard work had paid off. The rules they wrote that summer, more than 200 years ago, are the ones we still use today. And when our founding fathers left Philadelphia that summer, our country had a new name. We, the people of the United States, they wrote. From then on, the 13 former British colonies were called the United States of America. One thing the representatives discussed that summer was their need for a leader. They decided that a president chosen by the people to serve for only a few years would be better than a king who was not elected and served for his entire lifetime. And guess who they wanted to lead them? Yep, you guessed it, George Washington himself. Once again, he had wanted to settle down at Mount Vernon and he had been called to serve his country. In 1789, when George Washington left his home in Virginia to become the first president of the United States of America, he had no idea what he was going to do. As the president of the new country, he knew that his presidency would set an example for all future presidents. While president, Washington stayed very busy. He helped organize a permanent national army and navy and set up a national banking system. As president, George Washington lived first in New York City, and later in Philadelphia. He worked hard on plans for a city that would be our nation's capital. George Washington personally chose the capital site along the Potomac River on land that is between Maryland and Virginia. This capital city would not be in any state, so no state could say that it was in charge of the country. The capital city was designed to have a house in which the president and his family would live. It would also have many government buildings. George Washington was no longer president when the capital city was finally built, but the city was named in his honor. It was called Washington, D.C. After serving as president of the United States for eight years, George Washington packed up and headed home to Virginia. 
He died at Mount Vernon at the end of 1799, about two and a half years later. A patriot, a founder of our nation, a military commander, and our first president. Washington has rightly been called the father of our country. Many places have been named for him. Monuments and statues have been built in his honor. And you can even find his picture on our money, both on a paper bill and on a coin. So we learned that Washington DC was created to be our capital and it was not in any specific state and it was not going to be a state. It was going to be its own separate entity. So no state could say that they had the ruling powers over the country. So that was a really important part of our capital. It wasn't just going to be our capital is New York. Our capital is Pennsylvania. Our capital is a separate entity called Washington DC. It's not its own state because it's meant to represent the country as a whole and they didn't want any one, con any one state to feel like it was in charge of the entire country. So now that we've reviewed this lesson, go back and repeat anything that you need repeated. Once you're finished, please head back to Seesaw and complete the activity that goes along with this lesson.